Hey, good morning, good morning, everybody. How are you? Let's get today started. Hey, happy Monday. Welcome, welcome. What's up, James? Hey, Cheryl, how y'all doing? Good morning, good morning. Hey, invite some people. Let them know we're here. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing this Monday morning? I hope everybody is well. All right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. I know that was kind of like a... Where's a little thing here so I can turn this off? Boom. How y'all doing today? All right, welcome. It's Monday morning, and I am Sensei Sabira coming to you from Baltimore. I am talking to my spiritual entrepreneurs who are out there doing their thing. How are y'all doing today? I know you're doing well. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. I'm going to tell you the truth. Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Hey, Ia. Hey, Clarissa. To my replay viewers, I want to say thank you. Thank you for coming and checking me out on a regular. Um, thank you for all the shares and the likes in advance because they have been coming like amazing. So thank you guys for just putting me out there, letting folks know about what we're doing over here and what am I doing over here? So um, my intention really is to provide a space of information and inspiration, encouragement for spiritual entrepreneurs out there in the marketplace. Because what I realized, there's nobody really talking to us about how to actually grow your business, especially from a grassroots level, right? So you're a healer, you're a light worker of some sort, uh, like my, my uh, student Cheryl there, she, she's a yoga uh, instructor. Guys, if you have a business, do me a favor right now. Drop your links here. Folks are looking for you. They come on here and they're looking for good people to connect with who work with integrity. So if especially if you are regular on this broadcast, please drop your links in here so folks can connect with you, right? Um, my, my role in this space is to just bring some information that's going to help you to grow your business from wherever you are and do it in our in our way in our language so today let me recap what we were talking about last week thank you guys so much for sharing this out people are just coming in and watching this broadcast this morning thanks cheryl for putting your your link in here um so we were talking about how al rod's book the miracle morning which entails um getting up at 5 a.m and how waking up early can make a difference in your business. Oh my goodness, my brother from another mother up in New York. How are you doing, Ronald? I just love you. Ah, that just made my heart just sing. So anyway, so he has uh, this practice called Lifesavers, right? And the SAVERS is an ac acronym. And let me share with you what that is in case you haven't, weren't here last week or, um, you know, you're just, you're just, tuning in today for the first time. So we got silence and I do a slash spiritual practice, right? So whatever your spiritual practice is, do that in some, in silence, just for this morning piece, right? So your spiritual practice done in silence, affirmations, visioning, um, exercise. And today we're going to look at reading. Thanks for the, for the, uh, engagement. I appreciate that. Thanks for the shares that are happening. Um, so let's look at reading today. And I know reading is probably like, Sabira, are you really going to sit here and talk to me about reading? Really? Really? I'm a grown person. I don't need you to talk to me about reading. I run a successful business. I don't need you to talk to me about reading. Well, let me tell you this. Most of us have heard that readers are leaders, right? And that sounds very cliche, but it's absolutely true. If you look at statistics, it will show you that most adults, when they leave high school, stop reading. They stop reading or the things that they do read are really dumbed down. So how can you go out and be able to provide in a business environment if you're not challenging and keeping your gray matter active and firing and working, okay? So those things that you would think are really irrelevant or unimportant are the most important aspects 
of your personal growth and development and the growth and development of your business. And you owe it to the people you serve to be on the cutting edge of information in terms of how to grow a business, provide great service, but also to be able to cater to their specific needs. So if you're not doing that, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not providing the um, best that you can to the people who are coming to you and giving you their hard earned cash. So please pick up a book and read on a regular. Let's delve a little deeper into that, okay? Let's delve a little deeper into that. So constant learning. The difference between an entrepreneur and either a self-employed individual or an employee, right? An employee and a self-employed professional tend to be very specific in what they know, right? They are specialists. If you're an entrepreneur, you actually have to be a generalist, meaning you have to know a little bit about a lot. I think it was Henry Ford who says, I don't have to know everything. I just need to have connections in my network and I need to know who to call when there's specific things I need to know. Entrepreneurs tend to hire uh, people who have specialized knowledge, right? But as an entrepreneur, as the one that's kind of sitting at the helm of this big ship, you better know a little bit about a lot of, so that you can tell when things are off. You need to be able to read trends happening in the marketplace. Guys, do people talk to you about this kind of stuff? Tell me right now. When you go to these other, to, to other folks that are talking about growing a business, are they actually giving you this kind of information? Is this, is this good to y'all? Let me know. Let me know if this is good to you. Tell me, is it good or is it not good? Am I hitting on something for you guys? I'm not here to just inspire, guys. Okay? I want to give you something that you can actually go away with and grow your business with. Just coming on and inspiring you, that was a chapter in my book, right? That was a chapter in my growth and development, but I've grown. So that means these live streams, we get ready to ratchet it up, guys. I want to give you the things you need, at least the beginnings of what you need to look at to be able to literally grow your business. Whether you are a massage therapist, a Reiki uh, master teacher, healer, uh, a singer, an artist, whatever. These are the kinds of things you need to, to, to you know, grab hold of. So let's keep it going. Okay, um, what kind of books do you want to read? I've already told you like why, but now I want to tell you kind of what you want to be reading. And these are just, this is just a small sampling of some things you, you may want to look at adding to your library if it's not already there. You like that? You like that, Rosa? <laughs> okay, of course, books related to your own particular niche, right? You want to read books that are particular to your niche because you want to know what's going on in your particular um, vertical that you're working in, okay? <clears throat> Investment and management books. Guys, if you have a desire to generate some money that you are actually the, the entrepreneur, you're actually responsible for growing this, your own pot of gold, you dang sure better know how to manage it. You better know how to manage it. So, at least have a cursory understanding of accounting and, and business management. Okay. I'm not saying you got to go back to school and get an MBA, hire an MBA, but you need to understand those books. You need to understand the numbers or else you will be robbed blind. Okay. I was reading something this morning about, um, uh, mama Aretha. And it said that Aretha would not sing <clears throat> all her contracts had it written up front that she was to be given $25,000 cash directly. You weren't giving it to her accountant, her money manager, none of that. No, you want me to sing? You need to give me $2,500, I mean, I'm sorry, $25,000 cash on the barrel if I'm even gonna open my mouth. That was her value that she brought to the marketplace. And she made sure she had control over that first bit of cash that was coming to her. She passed away very, very wealthy. Do you know how many folks I know and my beloved prince who I love who didn't have things like his will in place, which was actually kind of surprising to me. Guys, we got to know these things. 
being a spiritual entrepreneur does not, you know, make it so that, that those are things you don't have to handle. We have to get that stuff down and then have people in your camp that you trust that are, are, are going to, you know, maybe manage it for you, but you got to understand it. Okay. Moving on mentors guys. I have, I have three mentors in particular, but as it relates to growing my business right now, I'm studying with one person and I have watched all of her YouTube videos and she's got YouTube videos going back like 10 years or more, probably. I don't remember exact, but she's got a huge body of work, right? Not only do I study her body of work, but I know her lineage. I know where she learned. She's been in the business for 19, 20 years. She learned from somebody. So I actually know and have studied her teachers and their teachers. So I'm constantly studying attraction marketing. How did this grow out of, you know, regular marketing? That's my thing. So whoever your teacher is, first of all, make sure you have a mentor, study their body of work. And if they don't have a body of work, mm, that might be a problem. That might be a problem something for you to at least look at. Okay. Um, read autobiographies and biographies of successful entrepreneurs that you may want to, you can glean information from. I know guys, this is a little bit dry. I know it, but this is what it takes. This is what it takes for us to actually be pillars in our uh, market, in our section of the marketplace. We must read, right? Success leaves clues and they're going to leave it in their body of work that they wrote. Another mentor of mine that I studied with, not directly, he passed away on what is today, the 20th. So he passed away three days ago. God rest his soul. Mark Harvest, uh, Hoverson, great attraction marketer. And he passed away, but he left again years and years and years and years of his writings that I can always go back and read to make me a better uh, marketer. You guys, we got to stay up with what is going on in terms of society, right? So pick and choose. You guys know I don't have a TV in my house. I don't even own a television. So I pick and choose how I get my news from sources that I know are actually giving news <laughs> that are credible. And I'm not going to tell you who that is. You know, you know how to do that due diligence for yourself, but find credible sources of news guys. Why? <clears throat> Because if you are understanding the trends that are happening in the marketplace, if you are understanding what the pains are in your marketplace, what the problems are in your marketplace, then guess what? You can be the one to, to, to provide solutions, right? Does that make sense? If that makes sense, let me know it makes sense, guys. Let me know that makes sense for you. That is just about being an aware entrepreneur caring enough to be aware to say what is going on with my segment of the pipe, what's happening, what's changing, right? And last, but absolutely not least, this is actually first, but you want to be reading your own sacred text, whether that is the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, on and on and on, whatever that is for you, I suggest that you read that because there are wisdom. There is a reason that these sacred texts have existed for so long and been prayed over and, and spoken about. There are power in the sacred texts, right? So it's going to support you in having a deepening your spiritual connection with the God of your understanding, right? And it's going to make you more sensitive and aware. Hey, twin. Hey, twin. Give me a call later. Let me know if we're still on for next Monday. Um, but deepening your spiritual connection, your understanding of the inner workings of relationships, because everything we're doing, guys, it's about relationships. It's about relationships. And I don't care what sacred text you pick up, it's going to teach you about relationships. And there ain't nothing new under the sun. And attraction marketing is one of the oldest, oldest spiritual practices. It's a law right? Or, or principle. There, there are laws and principles. So if you understand and you can see these patterns that have happened for eons and begin to understand how to implement those patterns and see them operating in your own life, in your own business, things will flow much more smoothly for you.
okay? All right, so guys, you want to understand, I know there was a note here that I had written to myself. I'm telling you guys, chemo brain is real and it lasts a long time. But anyway, it's gone now, so I forgot. Um, but you, you want to read. You want to be reading on a regular basis. You will see some of the most successful um, entrepreneurs read literally like 40, 50 books a year. There's actually people who are trained on how to speed read. They don't read every single word. It's, it is fascinating. Fascinating. And what you can bring to the marketplace for the people you serve by reading. I want to know, you guys tell me on average, how many books do you read in a year? You're running a business and I know you're like, Sabira, I really don't have time to read. I'm exhausted. Let me tell you guys a secret. I may read one page a day. I'm not saying sit down and read a chapter, but I'm saying the importance of reading even one page a day. So I wanna know who here reads at least four books a year, one a quarter. You take three months and say, okay, I'm gonna read this one book for three months. How many people read about four books, you know, one to four books, let's put it like that. If you read one to four books, Type in the um, comment here. I'm just curious to know how many of us are actually reading because you, 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 it's important to stay ahead. So I'm, I'm going to give it a few minutes. Let me take a sip here of my morning libation. <laughs> how was you guys' weekend anyway? Was your weekend good? I was exhausted. All right. Cheryl says she does. Kathy says she reads one to four. Excellent. And that's, you guys, that's a great place to start. All right, Cecile reads one to four books. That is a great place. Do me a favor then. I want to know what you're reading right now. Why? Because the replay viewers are going to come back and it's always a good idea to know what other people are reading because maybe you have your finger on the pulse of a book I haven't heard of before. Um, the book I'm reading right now is called Energy Leadership. Where is it? It's not in my, it's not here. I think I have it upstairs. Anyway, the book I'm reading right now is called Energy Leadership. Energy Leadership. I will snap a picture of it and, and post it up for you guys later so you can see. And I have been reading this book for, what is this? August, July, uh, maybe like two months. So I'm almost done with it now. But it's a great book on um, kind of like management. Um, this guy who goes into a company and um, helps the relationships within the, the company is on its way down and how did he bring it back, you know, the, the relationship. So, mm. did I see Tay get on here? Hello, Tay. Okay, my twin says Bible and Holy Spirit books. Excellent. And guys, if, if, what, if you tend to read along the same genre all the time, expand. So if you're always reading business management books, expand. If you're always reading, you know, books of uh, spiritual books, expand. Okay. Expand guys. we got to expand because being in business is about just that expansion. This is a journey of expansion. Trust me when I tell you constant growing. That's what I was going to say that I forgot earlier. Oh, thank you, God. Um, that entrepreneurism and, and the marketplace is constantly, constantly changing. And so if you're not reading, if you're not up on what's going on, you will be left behind. You will become obsolete. Yes, Kermit. Actually, uh, magazines, periodicals, those are great. Tell me some of your favorite ones. Post some of your favorite ones here. They absolutely do count. Because sometimes all you can get in is a quick article. That's great. I have books, you know, in the bathroom. You know, usually I would go into like my grandma's bathroom and it would be like some crossword puzzle, which is good, which is good. But as an entrepreneur, I'm looking for every opportunity I have to consume some good information. So in my bathroom, there's uh, uh, books that are going to help me do that. I never go out of my house without a book. Never leave my house in my backpack or my briefcase or whatever. I don't carry a briefcase. My backpack typically. 
is a book. So if I'm waiting in line somewhere, guys, you got to be able to, I've got to be able to use my time wisely. You need to be able to use your time wisely. So trust manifesting your world and contract law. That's the name of the book, Kathy. That sounds like a good book. That sounds like something right up my alley. Please tell us who that's by. Cause that sounds like something we should all kind of like read probably over the course of a year. That sounds like a heavy book, but guys, we want to, you want to be reading stuff like that. Okay. Cause if you have a business, you need to understand contract and contract law. I'm not saying you need to be an attorney, but you need to be down, be able to sit down and have an intelligent conversation with attorneys. You need to be able to understand. Oh, that's three books. Okay. Awesome. Can you give us titles and um, authors, please? Is that titles and authors? Because um, those are those are that's something. I, those are books that I would want in my library. Yeah, very successful people have libraries. They don't watch television, guys. I, I'm like a, a, my life and my business started going up as soon as I was actually forced to take a turn turn my. Um, remove TV because I couldn't afford it when I got sick. Like that was a luxury I could no longer afford. And it was one of the biggest blessings and changes of my life was removing uh, the bill, the cable bill in general, because I was paying way too much. And I was able to redirect that back into my business. Right. And then TV is not a distraction. I'm not saying I don't watch stuff, but I control what comes in. Right. I control so I may watch whatever I can stream on TV, I mean, on uh, the internet, I stream it in, but it's what I've chosen. I'm not being bombarded with commercials, right? Somebody trying to get me to buy stuff that I don't want to buy, but emotionally I may be triggered and, and buy it out of distraction or whatever. So there's so many things happening. When you are reading, you're in control of what you're consuming, right? You can close the book when you want, and there's not all kind of commercials and stuff coming at you. So, mm. all right, guys. So thanks for sharing all those books. Um, guys, I hope you guys took notes. I think um, Reese or somebody was scribing down what I was saying. We're going to come back tomorrow and round this all up. Guys, thank you so much for sharing this uh, video. If I've said one thing, if I've said one thing that was of value to you today, please share this out. Okay. Again, I want to let you know that I am still accepting uh, new students for attraction marketing. Um, I'm going to work with no more than 25 people over the next um, six, 90 days or so. Okay. So if you would like a space, let me know. How do you let me know? Send me a direct message. Um, or you can, yeah, send me a direct message or you can just click the link that I put in the over in the uh, description here. But guys, if you don't know how to generate leads for yourself, if you don't have enough people to talk to on a regular basis about your product and your service, if you're not serving enough people, if you're not serving the amount of people that you desire to be serving, if you're not telling your story in your business, if you're just saying, buy my stuff, hire me, let me, you know, come get on my massage table or on my yoga mat, but you're not providing value above and beyond that to, to develop a relationship, you're going to have a hard way to go. That's just a simple fact. You're going to have a hard way to go. You're going to have a hard way to go. You will have so much success and then you will hit a wall. You will hit a ceiling. You will hit a ceiling. You've got to learn how to monetize. Oh, and that reminds me, another thing that reading does, it will teach you how to write your emails. It will teach you how to write your, your blog posts, your um, Facebook posts. It will teach you how to tell your stories. When you are reading good books, you will learn how to tell stories. That's what attraction marketing is all about. Learning how to tell your stories. And that's what I do, guys. I'm here to support, you know, small home-based business, how to tell your story. When you can do that, your customer will fall in love with you. And as a direct correlation of that, they will want to do business with you. It's just human nature. You got to understand 
human nature. There's so much to understand as an entrepreneur. I know, I know guys, I know, but you can do it. And you can do it. Yeah, Cheryl, reading will teach you how to tell your story. I read all different types of books and magazines and poetry and all kinds so that I can get better and better at telling my story. And people can, the right people will find a resonance with me and say, hey, come show me, show me how to how to change around what I'm doing. I'm working too hard. You guys, you're working too hard if you're not using attraction marketing. And if you're not, if you don't know how to market at all, you're definitely working too hard. You're, you're actually begging. That's what you're doing. You're begging. Please look at my stuff, buy my stuff, work with me. Please, please, please. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. So, all right. Um, yes, Kathy says yes, because it's you that you're really selling. It's actually, Kathy, let's take that even further. Let's take it further than sell. I mean, selling is like, we know that's going to happen. It has to happen. A transaction has to happen because I need this light on so that I have good lighting so that I can, I can serve you. This is part of my value to the marketplace every day, every single day, Monday through Friday. This is my value add that I've made a commitment to do. But what I'm really doing, and Kathy, what you're really doing is serving and solving challenges that your customers are having. Right? You are solving problems through service and storytelling undergirds it all. Let me say that again. Dang. I hope somebody wrote that down. Sometimes you got to keep talking to get to the nugget. That was a nugget right there. So people who left earlier, I hope they come back and catch the replay. That was the nugget. Solving problems through storytelling and service. I think I said it a better way before, but y'all know how that happens. You get to talking and like it comes out one time. I hope somebody wrote it down. Anyway, guys, if you're not on my email list and you want to be on my email list, um, send me a direct message or just put in here email list so that I can add you to my email list. Um, again, this is for people who are interested in attraction marketing. How can I do things easier? How can I communicate easier? Um, I'll put you on my email list. And I'm going to tell you, I talk to my list, my tribe, just about every day. I don't think I emailed last week because I was really tired. Thank you. Oh, Cheryl, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, that's what I do in a nutshell. That's what I do, solving through serving, and it's undergirded through storytelling. That's it. That's, that's what I do. And guys, if you learn how to do that, that's one of the most ancient, number one, forms of healing storytelling and a way to transfer knowledge and information is to just, they would sit around the campfire and just tell stories that bonds people and all kinds of beautiful things come out of that. All right, guys, I'm going on tangents. Let me stop. Thank you so much for your time this morning. I didn't know that reading would go into this deep, deep place, but it has, and that's beautiful. Thanks again to my replay viewers who, um, We'll catch this a little bit later. Thank you to everybody who has shared this out. Um, guys, you are so needed in the marketplace. Those of us who grow our business from a spiritual place, standing in that, affirming in that, and still be a spiritual being and stand in that as well. It's all good, guys. It's all good. And you are deserving and worthy of it all. So go out, create a beautiful day. Check back in with me tomorrow here. I'm sorry I was about seven minutes late today, but I couldn't get my lighting right. But I, I got it together finally. That's just life. That's real, guys. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. Lighting wouldn't work, so I was a little bit late. I'll be back tomorrow, though, 830. And uh, I appreciate you guys for being here, as always. So create a beautiful day. And we will talk tomorrow. Peace.